Good evening, all. I heartily welcome all of you to Microbiology INSA Number Two Thousand Twenty Three Recall Session. Hope all of you have done the exams well. <clears throat> and hoping for the good results and those who have not prepared i know you are not expecting the good results but still if you are given a good attempt if you put your maximum efforts that is always gives you benefit that always gives you benefit so without any delay let's start with our session Okay. Okay, very pretty. <clears throat> so, let's move on to the question number first. What you have recollected? Sir, which among the following require BSL three? BSL three means bio safety level three. For that, we need to know the bio safety levels. Sir, we have four bio safety levels: one, two, three, four. Sir, bio safety level one. Right is for just remember bio safety level one is for non pathogenic organisms. So bio safety level one <coughs> is for non pathogenic organisms. Non pathogenic organisms. So for non pathogenic organisms, we go for bio safety level one. So safety levels which have to take. to prevent to prevent the spread of infection or to get the infection from the organisms to prevent the infection from the organisms while handling the organisms the safety levels bio safety levels bio safety means safety from bio bio means microorganisms the which we handle as microbiologists so for non pathogenic organisms we have to take the safety level 1 for the pathogens which causes mild to moderate disease <clears throat> mild to moderate disease Sir, mild to moderate disease like hepatitis A, streptococcus pyogenes, Borrelia, then Salmonella. Many will come. These are the few examples. Mild to moderate disease causing, we have to take bio safety level two. And the one which causes moderate to severe level, moderate to severe disease, moderate to severe disease. Then we have to go for bio safety level three. Examples are few important examples: Yersinia pestis, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, SARS, rabies, West Nile virus, Hanta virus. We they require bio safety level three, moderate to severe type of disease. Sir, bio safety level four, severe disease, severe disease with high mortality, severe disease with high mortality. We require bio safety level four. Sir, very crisp and clear explanation. Right, non-pathogenic organisms. Bio safety level one, mild to moderate disease. Bio safety level two, moderate to severe disease. Bio safety level three, the bio safety severe disease with high mortality. Sir, bio safety level four, for example, Ebola virus and smallpox virus. The level of bio safety, the level of safety, what we have to take while handling the microorganisms. Very simple. With that, with this explanation, if you see the question now, which among the following requires bio safety level three? Sir, Crimean and Congo fever require bio safety level four. Sir, Ebola virus require bio safety level four. Sir, XDR TB requires bio safety level three. Sir, Salmonella requires bio safety level two, and that's why they are asking bio safety level three. Therefore, the answer is XDR TB. Very simple, straight water, straight forward, clear cut explanation and easy answer. XDR TB. So, with that, moving to the next question, the question number two: Which of the following organism require reverse transcriptase enzyme before amplification in PCR? Sir, in my class, if you attended my class, I have told you people that PCR can amplify. can amplify only dna pcr can amplify only dna as it can amplify only dna we can detect only dna containing organisms and all the organisms have dna except rna viruses rna viruses are the only organisms which are having rna but no dna which are having rna but no dna no dna that's why for rna for rna organisms we have to do rt pcr rt pcr for rna containing organisms and rna containing organisms are only rna viruses rna viruses are known as rna viruses because they have only rna they don't have dna whereas all other organisms they have both dna and rna 
all other organisms they have both dna and rna as all other organisms have both dna and rna they have dna therefore pcr can amplify dna and pcr can detect all organisms except rna viruses rna viruses we have to add rt rt means reverse transcriptase enzyme which converts rna to dna then dna gets amplified and detected very simple as it can't amplify dna we convert rna to dna by adding reverse transcriptase enzyme then dna gets amplified then the organism gets detected very simple sir therefore so straight for the, here the question what they're asking indirectly is identify which of the following is rna virus so the only rna virus in this question is respiratory syncytial virus if you have to do bcr first you have to convert rna to dna for that you have to add reverse transcriptase enzyme then dna get amplified then r, r respiratory syncytial virus gets detected so respiratory respiratory syncytial virus belongs to the family if you have attended my class paramyxogridae family see paramyxogridae family important viruses what we discuss are nipa mumps and measles other than that we have respiratory syncytial virus <clears throat> we have new casual virus there are many other viruses sir para rsv belongs to paramyxo virus it is rn virus whereas cytomegalovirus belongs to hhv5 herpes virus 5 that is a dna virus parvo virus is a dna virus herpes simplex virus is a dna virus sir all are dna viruses pcr can directly amplify the dna no need to add reverse transcriptase and they for except for rna virus like respiratory syncytial virus sir we required reverse transcriptase enzyme to convert rna to dna then dna gets amplified that's why the answer is b moving on to the next question question number 3 sir which among the following is a super antigen sir the image was given sir super antigen you know super antigen is antigen that binds to that binds to lateral side of the beta chain lateral side of the beta chain of mhc2 receptor of mhc2 receptor that is what is super antigen whereas normal antigen sir if you talk about the normal antigen normal antigen sir normal antigen binds to antigen binding group it binds to antigen binding group group which is which lies between which which lies between alpha 1 and which lies between alpha 1 and beta 1 or between alpha chain and beta chain you can say between alpha chain and beta chain alpha 1 subunit and beta 1 subunit between alpha chain and beta chain so normal antigen binds to antigen binding group between alpha and beta chain right whereas right super antigen binds to lateral side of the so because normal antigen binds to antigen binding group for normal antigen ini initiates normal immune response normal immune response there are super to tackle super antigen our body has to exaggerate the immune response we get exaggerated immune response with super antigen and exaggerated immune response leads to tissue damage and because of that we get the diseases so important examples for super antigen right examples for super antigen examples for super antigen so two important examples what you should not forget is staphylococcus aureus and group a streptococcus staphylococcus aureus and group a streptococcus so staphylococcus aureus producing producing two toxins enterotoxin enterotoxin and toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 these two are super antigens sir group a streptococcus produces sir pyrogenic exotoxin which is also known as toxic shock syndrome toxin 2 pyrogenic exotoxin which is also known as toxic shock syndrome toxin 2 so these are the two important super antigens we never forget we have already discussed in our class sir that's why the answer is streptococcus pyrogenic exotoxin other exotoxins what given what they have given here they are not super antigens two important super antigens sir staphylococcus aureus and group a streptococcal toxins that's why these are super antigen that's why answer is a a is a super antigen others are not super antigens <clears throat> others are not super antigens sir moving on to the next question sir a patient manifested with fever and rashes and retro orbital headache sir fever is there rash is there retro orbital headache is there since 3 days sir retro orbital headache is characteristic feature of dengue clinically we can say it is dengue dengue investigation showed hemoglobin 14 wbc4 sir wbc4000 towards lower side always remember in viral infection wbc sir towards lower side and platelet count less than 1 lakh sir platelet count is less than 1.5 see normal range of platelet normal range of platelet is 1.5 to 4.5 lakhs 
year less than 1 lakh is reduction in platelet that also say probably dengue sir clinically also dengue with platelet also you can say that it is dengue all of the following can be done to confirm the diagnosis except sir clinically we are suspecting dengue because of retro orbital headache and also preliminary lab investigation right we can say because there are the platelet count is low we can say it is probably dengue but to confirm we have to prove the presence of organism or antibody we have to prove the presence of organism or antibody sir as the symptoms are since 3 days remember any infection you take any infection you take sir cut off point is cut off point is 1 week cut off point is 1 week 1 week sir within 1 week after 1 week always remember within 1 week organism detection is having good sensitivity than antibody detection after one week antibody detection is having good sensitivity than organism detection very simple <clears throat> sir when you get the infection when you get the infection one week one week of what that i will tell you one week of one week of illness or one week of symptoms one week of symptoms is the cut off point right sir within one week of symptoms organism detection is better than antibody after one week antibody detection is better than or organism detection right that is the basics of immunology basics of immunology so now as the symptoms are from 3 days it, it lies within one week of illness within one week of illness organism detection is better than antibody and organism you can detect by detecting the antigen and organism you can detect by doing the culture on culture media and organism you can detect by detecting the gene by rt pcr the rt pcr these are the three methods to detect the organism sir organism detection is better than antibody therefore within one week you can detect organism and organism can be detected by antigen detection or by culture all by gene but one week within one week of illness you can't go for antibody detection it is having very less sensitivity very less sensitivity antibody detection within one week very less sir one week of illness remember this one week of what one week of illness illness means from the onset of symptoms that also will write here because otherwise i know you will get confused from onset of symptoms one week of illness means from onset onset of symptoms organism detection is better than antibody therefore as the uh, symptoms are within 3 days from 3 days or since 3 days here organism detection is better therefore all tests which can detect the organism we can perform except antibody detection antibody detection we have to perform after one week of illness and that's why the answer is option d here this is the option d here that's why the answer is option d igm elisa moving on to the next question sir a patient with high grade fever neck stiffness and kernic sign was positive sir fever is the neck stiffness i want to highlight neck stiffness kernic sign i want to highlight so these are the two key symptoms clinically by which you can diagnose patient is suffering from meningitis csf analysis showed lymphocytosis sir increase in lymphocytes rule out increase in lymphocytes rule out acute bacterial meningitis you can rule out not you, you can't rule out bacterial chronic bacterial meningitis you see lymphocytosis acute bacterial meningitis is ruled out sir acute bacterial meningitis is ruled out because chronic bacterial meningitis is tubercular meningitis viral meningitis also you see lymphocytosis sir because of lymphocytosis i can narrow down to tubercular meningitis or viral meningitis bacterial meningitis is ruled out none of the above is also ruled out because there is meningitis here sir proteins at is a normal range of protein right normal range of protein is 15 into 45 and what is given here is 80 80 is almost 45 double double of 45 higher range ka double is also 90 sir almost highly elevated proteins are highly elevated highly elevated proteins you see in tubercular meningitis then say glucose is 20 the normal range of glucose is 20 to 40 mg per dec deciliter and here glucose is given 20 that is towards the lower side it lies within the normal range no doubt in that 20 but towards the lower side of normal range lower side means decreasing towards decreasing side lower side of normal range i don't know exactly it was 20 or not so that is what right students told me 20 it might be less than 20 i don't know guys if you know you can comment whether glucose was 20 or they directly mentioned low glucose high protein i don't know these are the numbers what i got from the students anyways <coughs> protein 80 means it is highly elevated sir highly elevated protein highly elevated protein 
with slightly glow glucose light, low low glucose such tubercular meningitis where in viral meningitis you get <coughs> slightly elevated protein <coughs> or normal protein and slightly decreased glucose or normal glucose always the picture is usually towards normal picture is usually towards normal anyways even if you see slightly decrease glucose sometimes in viral usually normal glucose usually normal glucose sometimes slight decrease in glucose you may see that is very very rare usually normal glucose slight see, glucose is always decreased in bacteria bacterial high decrease in glucose in acute bacterial low decrease in glucose in tubercular sir in case when you see decrease in glucose it goes in favor of tubercular but if you say 20 it might be matlab it is towards normal only lower side of the normal even if you consider viral it can't be viral because of highly elevated protein that you can see only in tubercular meningitis okay it was glucose 20 only okay fine thank you exactly 20 glucose was 20 okay guys even if you consider 20 even if you consider glucose is normal if not lower side if it is not less even if you consider it is normal then also answer is tubercular because of highly elevated protein that you never see in viral in viral slightly elevated are normal protein normal protein so that's why answer is more towards tubercular meningitis that's why answer is option a sir moving to the next question a patient manifested with fever seizures and par sir fever is there seizures and paralysis sir seizures paralysis they indicate towards the diagnosis encephalitis brain is affected sir in meningitis you won't see seizures you won't see paralysis in meningitis you see only signs of meningeal irritation like neck stiffness rudzunki sign positive kernick sign positive whereas in encephalitis when brain is involved you see seizures you see paralysis isolated organism is shown in the image identify the organism sir if you see the organism organism show the trophozoites trophozoit with sharp sharp non branching branching is very difficult to identify here but still you can say sharp non branching pseudopodia sharp non branching pseudopodia sir answer is acanthamoeba answer is acanthamoeba few students told me here the history was meningoencephalitis neck stiffness was also there that is what few students told me if neck stiffness is there then the diagnosis is meningitis seizures and paralysis is there encephalitis then together the diagnosis will become meningoencephalitis meningoencephalitis goes in favor of neglaria <coughs> whereas acanthamoeba causes gae granulomatous amoebic encephalitis sir whatever it is even if the question had meningoencephalitis ka picture even if the question had meningoencephalitis ka picture for example but the image image is of sir acanthamoeba image is this is not the trophozoite of neglaria so trophozoite of neglaria is having lobular pseudopodia or lobe like pseudopodia this is how it is lobe like pseudopodia lobe like pseudo that is not the, how the picture is that is not how the picture is right that is not how the picture is picture is having sharp pseudopodia sharp pseudopodia which looks like right which looks like acanthamoeba so that's why the answer is more in favor of acanthamoeba compared to neglaria because of the image even if the question had meningoencephalitis like how many of you told like you are also telling here there was no seizure right there was no seizure many of you are telling now that there was no seizure however image was acanthamoeba right answer so two week history diarrhea was there yes diarrhea was given yes diarrhea was given it's okay whatever it is whatever they give in the history see always remember image based question i always tell in the while taking the class image based question first see the image then you see the question because there are there will be many distractions there will be many distractions in the question especially in image based questions that's why first you have to see image because it is an image based question right so with that the image in favor of acanthamoeba that's why we are going for acanthamoeba okay and thanks for matlab uh, for your input that uh, two weeks history was there seizure was not there and yes diarrhea was given right thanks for the input moving on to the next question question number 7 a hiv positive adult manifest with manifested with neck rigidity and papilledema so neck rigidity papilledema again is in favor of neck rigidity and papilledema okay so neck rigidity neck rigidity tells what neck rigidity says there is meningitis there is meningitis papilledema says there is increase intracranial pressure so there are four signs of increase intracranial pressure what are the four signs of increase intracranial pressure sir severe headache severe headache severe headache then projectile vomiting 
projectile vomiting projectile vomiting then then altered sensorium altered sensorium and finally sir papilledema papilledema sir these are the four signs of increased intracranial pressure question is telling a hiv positive patient patient is hiv positive got meningitis because neck rigidity is there neck rigidity is a sign of meningeal irritation there is meningitis right there is meningitis and papilledema papilledema means there is increased intracranial pressure csf sample showed the capsulated organism positive for india ink right capsulated organism sir which of the following statement is true which of the following statement is true that's the question sir meningitis in hiv patient most common organism is cryptococcus which is capsulated so the one thing which is in favor of cryptococcus here is capsulated organism causing meningitis in hiv sir cryptococcus sir it is cryptococcal meningitis it is cryptococcal meningitis normal value of glucose is 120 120 in brackets okay in previous question even if glucose is normal like i said like i said highly elevated protein favors tubercular meningitis thanks for the input okay but most of the students say glucose was 20 so now cryptococcal meningitis why cryptococcus because capsulated organism causing meningitis obviously cryptococcus causes meningitis it is capsulated and it is most common organism causing meningitis in hiv patient therefore answer is cryptococcal meningitis now hiv patient means a hiv patient is on anti retroviral therapy got cryptococcal meningitis now do we have to, the question is which of the following statement is true sir postpone the anti retroviral therapy for 2 to 3 weeks true statement man you got the true statement you got the true statement sir why because sir remember this point sir first treat opportunistic infections first treat opportunistic infections infections and then start ERT this is the rule of treating opportunistic infection in HIV sir what happens what happens Right. If you start ERT, what happens if you start ERT and then treat and then treat opportunistic infection? What happens if you do opposite? What happens if you do opposite? Treat opportunistic infection. Sir, we get a complication iris, immune reconstitution, inflammatory syndrome. Right, immune reconstitution, in, inflammatory syndrome. We get a complication, iris. Why, sir? See, when you start the ERT, what happens, sir? If you start the ERT, immune system will, right, recover. In HIV patient, immune system will recover. When immune system will recover, and then if you start the treatment, you get immune reconstitution, immune uh, inflammatory syndrome. Sir, first treat the opportunistic infection, right, and then you start the ERT. That is the rule. So that's why first you have to postpone the antiretroviral therapy. That is the first thing. True statement. So what about the remaining statement we got the answer true statement because they're asking the true statement we got the answer but if you see csf pressure mostly remains normal no sir 60 to 80 percent of the cases 60 to 80 percent of cryptococcal meningitis in hiv csf pressure is always high 60 to 80 percent of cases csf pressure is high increase and in, that's why you now in question also they told papilledema there is increase in intracranial pressure a 60 to 80 percent of cases Right, intracranial pressure is high. Initiate treatment with amphotericin B. No, sir, we have discussed in our class. Complete treatment is liposomal amphotericin B. Complete treatment is liposomal amphotericin B plus fluconazole alone. Sir, monotherapy you should not use. This is the complete treatment. And in case of severe cryptococcosis along with liposomal amphotericin B, man, we have to add flu, cytosine. In case of severe cryptococcosis. Sir, alone, only with liposomal amphotericin B, you should not treat. Sir, initially we have induction phase, liposomal amphotericin B for two months. Then consolidation phase, fluconazole 400 mg for eight months. Then maintenance phase, fluconazole 200 mg till CD4 count crosses 100. Till CD4 count, count crosses 100. This is the complete treatment of, right? What is that? Cryptococcal meningitis in HIV patients. In CV, if it is a severe case, you have to add flu cytosine. Sir, actually, guideline says 
if cryptococcal meningitis you see in hiv patient by default you have to add flu cytosine along with liposomal amphotericin you have to add like flu cytosine it is not plus or minus it is plus flu cytosine so that's why only amphotericin be not possible brain imaging shows changes in 80% of the patient answer is no brain imaging shows changes in 20 to 30% of the patients not 80% only 20 to 30% of the patients shows changes in the brain when you take the imaging of the brain therefore so this is a false statement 80 not 80% is 20 to 30% this is also false statement treatment is not only with amphotericin b it is with amphotericin b with fluconazole severe cases you have to add flu cytosin <coughs> csf pressure remains normal <coughs> that is also a false statement because a 60 to 80% cases csf sample will be elevated and you have to postpone the anti retroviral therapy right postpone the antiviral therapy sir i think it was multiple choice question it was single choice answer no rs it was not multiple choice okay fine hope it is not multiple choice right only one thing according to the question what i have recollected and options i have recollected this is the answer if the question is different options are different answer may change right that you should not forget these are the answers given based on the question and options what i have got even in one even one word change in the question or one option changes when answer changes with this question and these options this is the answer i have given you the reason sir move on to the next question question number 8 a patient manifested with fever and the findings as shown in the following image sir there was a fever and there was findings like what is the finding finding is black eschar black eschar means a black color skin lesion a black color skin lesion creatinine was 1.4 sir creatinine was 1.4 means there is kidney injury sir black eschar is a lesion skin lesion black color skin lesion that you see only in two diseases scrub typhus and anthrax only in two diseases scrub typhus and anthrax it is not it is seen only in two diseases in in microbiology in infectious diseases sir black eschar we see only in two diseases scrub typhus and anthrax nowhere else you see black eschar and scrub typhus ka the most common complication most common complication is renal injury renal injury it causes acute kidney injury aki and it causes ckd also chronic kidney disease aki acute kidney injury so the most common complication right a farmer history of farmer okay farmer okay history of farmer was there okay history of farmer was there take the history of farmer also right whatever it is sir black eschar seen in only two <coughs> diseases right black eschar is seen here also but kidney injury is not seen with anthrax kidney injury is the most common complication of scrub typhus that's why the answer is scrub typhus so creatinine 1.4 that is a very important key point here right and if there were any other right key points given in the question might be i don't know this is what i have got i have not got any other key points in this question if you have any other key points in the question please input from your side you can give input from your side otherwise with this question with these findings we can say it is scrub typhus otherwise without creatinine in, in this question scrub typhus anthrax both are possible then they should have given some key point favoring anthrax like favoring anthrax like cattle or something and all they have to give the animal and you know scrub typhus is a vector transmitted disease transmitted by trombiculid mite and anthrax is a zoonotic disease acquired from cattle like that one or the other key point they would have given if they would have expected anthrax as an answer no here because they are expecting scrub typhus as an answer they have given one key point what is that kidney injury green creatinine 1.4 normal range of creatinine is sir <clears throat> it is somewhere around up to 1.1 to 1.2 maximum range 0.4 to 1.1 or 1.2 or you can consider one or up to 1.1 to 1.2 also you consider normal 1.4 is always higher range of creatinine so there is kidney injury that's why the answer is sir scrub typhus scrub typhus moving to the next question a patient diagnosed to have scrub typhus sir one more question on scrub typhus a developed high grade fever and cough what is the treatment of this condition right what is the treatment of this condition sir scrub typhus is caused by orientia susugumushi orientia susugumushi which is an organism which is a cousin brother of rickettsia it belongs to rickettsia and family and the drug of choice for most of the rickettsia and family members it is doxycycline doxycycline is the drug of choice for rickettsia and most of its family members most of its family members doxycycline is the drug of choice the second drug of choice is azithromycin 
the second drug of choice is azithromycin sir usually we start with doxycycline if doxycycline is resistant the second preferred drug is azithromycin sir not only here scrub typhus a patient diagnosed of scrub scrub typhus developed high grade fever and cough there are lung manifestations sir we have to take care of the lung manifestations also what patient have developed patient have developed we have to treat scrub typhus along with that we have to take care of lung manifestations sir we can use azithromycin and we can use also ceftriaxone to manifest the lung symptoms but if you see the lung symptoms there is no dyspnea or breathing difficulty to suspect any severe case of pneumonia to so start any iv ceftriaxone second thing a mild respiratory illness can be treated with the oral antibiotics like azithromycin azithromycin not only take care of lung manifestations it can also right treat help in treating the additional drug which help in treating the scrub typhus so you can treat scrub typhus better by adding azithromycin which can not only take care of lung manifestations it also give help to doxycycline to treat scrub typhus that's why the best best combination to select here is iv doxycycline with azithromycin sir azithromycin we are selecting here not only to treat the lung manifestations it also help us to treat scrub typhus along with doxycycline but usually doxycycline is the drug of choice remember this so ceftriaxone also we can treat the lung manifestations but there is no need of ceftriaxone here two to iv drugs can needed in need is not there because it is just a mild lung manifestation and second azithromycin is preferred because it also help in treating the scrub typhus so doxycycline plus azithromycin is a better combination to treat a scrub typhus patient who developed the lung manifestations otherwise remember drug of choice for scrub typhus is doxycycline second drug of choice is azithromycin if the scrub typhus is resistant to doxycycline obviously doxycycline resistant drug, uh, scrub typhus answer will become azithromycin in this question it is doxycycline plus azithromycin that is the better to take care of the lung. sir only doxycycline we are taking care of scrub typhus not the lung manifestations so it not the lung manifestations without doxycycline so we are not taking care of scrub typhus sir anyways we have to go for scrub typhus with lung manifestations both are possible ceftriaxone can also take care but azithromycin is preferred i have given you why azithromycin is preferred that's why we got the answer Op answer is option c so there was pneumonia in the question iv ceftriaxone was given alone without azithromycin okay iv ceftriaxone was given alone without azithromycin okay if you consider iv ceftriaxone was given alone okay then answer is even if ceftriaxone was given even if it is pneumonia i'm telling you doxycycline plus azithromycin is a better combination if only iv ceftriaxone was given then there is no doubt here clear cut it is doxycycline please comment every guys everybody please comment it was only iv ceftriaxone it was only iv ceftriaxone or doxycycline with ceftriaxone please comment in the chat box so that we come to know what is the answer exactly but this is the answer for this question with that move to the next question question number 10 all of the following organisms are transmitted by the vector showed in the image the vector shown in the image see this is the vector which is having which is having a triangular a triangular plate a triangular plate triangular plate on the dorsum right triangular triangular plate on the dorsum of the vector sir if you see a triangular plate on the dorsum of vector that is the right vector which is nothing but tick that is nothing but hard tick that is nothing but exodictic hard tick or exodictic you know babesia is transmitted by hard tick exodictic orientia is transmitted by thrombiculid mite ehrlichia is transmitted by exodictic ccf is transmitted by exodictic the question is based on vector transmitted diseases the question is based on vector transmitted diseases vector transmitted diseases question is based on vector transmitted diseases and all these diseases are transmitted by tick except orientia susugumushi that causes scrub typhus which is transmitted by thrombiculid sir so many questions on scrub typhus right this is also on scrub typhus this is also on scrub typhus so this is also on scrub typhus three questions on scrub typhus rickettsi and brothers and very important topic right the rickettsi and brothers three questions on scrub typhus this is scrub typhus this is also treatment of scrub typhus here the based on vector of scrub typhus right mite is not the vector of scrub typhus that's the answer here mite is the vector for scrub typhus tick is not the vector otherwise all others are all others are transmitted by tick moving to the next question question number 11 which of the following receptor help the hiv genome to enter inside the cell sir if you take hiv virus hiv virus this is the receptor of hiv virus so this is gp41 this gp41 receptor this is gp120 receptor so this is the host cell host cell that is our cell which is our cell 
CD4 cell. CD4 cell contain which receptor? Sub so CD4 cell contains CD4 receptor. CD4 receptor. And there are two. There are two co receptors CXCR4 and CCR5. CCR5. Now HIV virus will bind to CD4 receptor. And the receptor binding is GP120 and CD4 receptor. So GP120 binds to CD4 receptor. Not only to CD4, it also binds to CXCR4 and CCR5. CXCR4 and CCR5. Okay, previous question, the option was doxycycline is f zone. Right, okay, fine. Still, the, I told you the answer is azithromycin because the second drug of choice for scriptyphus is azithromycin. And also, if scriptyphus is resistant to doxycycline, azithromycin will take care of scriptyphus and also lung manifestations. That's why. Answer was doxycycline plus azithromycin. So here the receptor of HIV which is binding to the receptors of our cell, sir, GP120. That's why the answer is GP120. Sir, the following receptor help the HIV genome to enter inside the host cell. GP120 is the receptor which is helping, which is helping the HIV to bind to our cell CD4 cell and enter inside CD4 cell. And it is binding to CD4 receptor. That is the main receptor. On our cell for HIV virus, that is not there on HIV. CXCR4 and CCR5, these are the co-receptors. These, the, so these are the co-receptors. These are the co-host cell receptors, not virus receptor. Co-host cell receptor. And these are the virus receptors. These are the virus receptors. Main receptor, main host cell receptor is CD4. That's how the binding happens, entry happens. That's why answer is GP120 because GP120 receptor of the HIV is binding. To the CD4 receptor. We got the answer, sir. Move to the next question. A HIV patient presented with white patch on the tongue. Sir, there is a white patch on the tongue. Right. Sir, white membrane. White membrane. Sir, differential diagnosis of white membrane. There are many differential diagnoses, but among the options, white membrane is seen in Epstein Barr virus and Candida, and white membrane is not seen in herpes simplex virus and human herpes virus 8. Right. Sir, among these two, sir, further the question continues. It was not able to remove even after rubbing not able to remove that white patch was not able to remove even after rubbing so remember white patch can be scraped off can be scraped off in case of candida it is not easy it is difficult but can be and white patch cannot be scraped off in case of epstein bar virus and that's where the answer is epstein bar virus so there are many differential diagnoses for white patch right there are many differential diagnoses of white patch many differential diagnoses of white patch uh, uh, white patch in the oral cavity but two important most common organisms are candida and hepatitis b epstein barr virus see they also say in hiv patient in hiv patient we see candida oral candidiasis and also oral hairy leukoplakia by epstein barr virus oral candidiasis by candida and oral hairy leukoplakia by epstein barr both are seen in hiv patient right and candida white patch can be easily scraped off epstein barr virus so white patch cannot be easily scraped off. that's how you come to know whether it is oral thrush or oral hairy leukoplakia right okay lateral side of the tongue was given okay fine considered lateral side of the tongue considered Lateral side of the tongue considered. That's why the answer is Epstein Barr virus. Moving on to the next question. Sir, a 13 year old girl married with sorry, sorry. A 13 year old girl manifested with fever and again retro orbital headaches. Sir, so many questions on dengue also. Sir, one bacteria most commonly repeated in this exam is Cryptyphus. One virus most commonly repeated is dengue virus. Tourniquet test was positive. NHS NS1 antigen was positive. Sir, retro clinically it is dengue, sir. Tourniquet is positive, probably dengue, sir. NS1 antigen was positive, confirmed dengue, sir. Right? Retroorbital headache, clinically dengue. Tourniquet is positive, probably dengue. NS1 antigen positive, confirmed dengue. So, so, so nicely the question is framed. Right? Clinically, they said dengue. Then lab diagnostically, probably they said dengue. So then NS confirmed, they confirmed that it is dengue. Which of the following come under severe criteria? So leukopenia, thrombocytopenia. This is probable dengue. This is probable dengue. Sir, persistent vomiting, hepatomegaly, these are warning signs in dengue. These are warning signs in dengue. Sir, AST and DLT more than 1000, sir, that is the criteria, of, one of the criteria for severe dengue. 
in the question if they would have asked which of the following command are probable dengue criteria then answer would have become a if they would ask which are the ones comes under warning signs then persistent vomiting hepatitis splenomegaly both are warning signs but i would have gone with persistent vomiting because warning signs may hepatomegaly should be more than 2 cm more than 2 cm that's why i would have gone with persistent vomiting but they have asked severe 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 that is important severe dengue sir severe dengue the criteria is ascelt more than 1000 that's why the answer is d ascelt more than 1000 for example i will show you the criteria here see the criteria is here for dengue virus sir tornic see leukopenia leukopenia is probable dengue probable thing you warning signs warning signs you can see persistent vomiting comes under warning sign liver enlargement more than 2 cm comes under warning sign liver enlargement more than 2 cm sir severe dengue criteria see severe dengue criteria sir severe dengue criteria you can see ast and alt more than 1000 ast and alt more than 1000 <coughs> so these are the <coughs> signs what they have taken here probable dengue criteria warning sign criteria and severe dengue criteria that's why answer is option d clear cut simple so this time questions were very easy if you have studied with concepts based on ins set so move to the next question toxin of which organism act by mechanism showed in the following image right toxin of which organism act by the mechanism showed in the following image if you see the following image this mention inactivation of elongation factor 2 inactivation sir clostridium difficile toxin act by increase in cyclic gmp coenobacterium diphtheria act, act by increasing inhibiting ef2 vibrio toxin act by increase in cyclic gmp sir shigella toxin act by inhibiting ribosomes inhibiting ribosomes and remember inhibiting ef2 leads to inhibition of protein synthesis inhibition of protein inhibition of ribosomes also lead to inhibition of protein synthesis protein synthesis so this is how that these toxins they act this is how these toxins they act sir inhibition of elongation factor 2 the answer is coenobacterium diphtheria coenobacterium diphtheria sir here i want to highlight one thing the proteins act by inhibiting protein synthesis the toxins act by inhibiting protein synthesis sir you can inhibit protein synthesis by inhibiting elongation factor 2 or by inhibiting ribosome whether you inhibit ef2 elongation factor 2 or you inhibit ribosomes ultimately what is inhibited protein synthesis is inhibited sir so inhibiting one is coenobacterium diphtheria diphtheria toxin coenobacterium diphtheria diphtheria toxin act by inhibiting ef2 and one more is sir pseudomonas pseudomonas bacteria ka exotoxin a exotoxin a act by inhibiting ef2 sir inhibiting inhibiting ribosomes ehec enterohemorrhagic e coli ka virocytotoxin virocytotoxin and shigella bacteria ka sir shiga toxin shigella bacteria ka sir shiga toxin and remember this virocytotoxin is also known as also known as shiga like toxin because their action is same it is also known as shiga like toxin because their action is same sir so we have four toxins which act by inhibiting protein synthesis out of these four toxins two act by inhibiting ef2 two act by inhibiting ribosomes easy to remember there is no need of mnemonic and all don't go for the mnemonics right we discuss without mnemonics right don't go for mnemonics sir very simple sir shiga toxin shiga like toxin ribosome story meaning is coenobacterium diphtheria and pseudomonas sir inhibition of ef2 very simple easy to remember so that's why the answer is here Coenobacterium back to diphtheria diphtheria toxin act by inhibiting ef2 moving on to the next question question number 15 sir a patient recovered from covid 19 sir recovered from covid 19 who was treated on steroids covid patient treated on steroids recovered now developed nasal discharge after 2 weeks of recovery sir history is clear cut of mucormycosis sir no need to see the image no need to see the image this was the clear cut history of mucormycosis which was the most common complication in recovered covid patients those treated with steroids those treated with steroids these are the predisposing factor high risk factors for high risk factors for mucormycosis recovered covid patient who treated on steroids with nasal discharge because the most common site is rhinocerebral most common site is rhinocerebral manifesting with a black color crust black color crust inside nose <clears throat> 
and paresthesia surrounding the paranasal area seizures if there is an involvement of brain right there are so many things and sample microscopy showed the following image they have given the image also that shows a broad hyphae right image shows broad hyphae broad hyphae so they are not narrow they are broad broad hyphae which looks like ribbon broad hyphae which looks like ribbon that is the characteristic of aseptate hyphae that is the characteristic of aseptate hyphae broad hyphae or aseptate hyphae where a septate hyphae are narrow hyphae sir now you see the branching branching also here if you see in this image if you see sir i can see one is obtuse angle or 90 degree somewhat like that obtuse and right 90 degree sir obtuse angle and right angle obtuse and right angle sir broad hyphae right i'm telling you broad hyphae obtuse and right angle aseptate molds aseptate molds right mucor mycosis is a disease that is caused by aseptate molds sir we have three aseptate molds right that is we call it as ram or ram whatever you say r for rhizopus r for rhizopus a for apsidia a for apsidia and m for mucor these are the three aseptate molds and all of them they cause that disease mucor mycosis and the most common causing mucor mycosis is rhizopus this question is based on mucor mycosis now if you see the question the answer is mucor because rhizopus is not there if rhizopus would have been there then would have gone for rhizopus then would have gone for rhizopus because rhizopus is most common rhizopus is not there mucor is there okay fine sir mucor mucor is mucor causes mucor mycosis aspergillus candida coccidiodes they won't cause mucor mycosis and they are not aseptate molds they are not aseptate molds aseptate mold is only it is aseptate molds are only three rhizopus apsidia and mucor remaining are not aseptate molds so it may say it is aseptate mold this is says it is mucor mycosis therefore the answer is mucor very simple answer is option e sir move to the next question a patient on steroids right patient on steroids manifested with nasal bleeding on examination nasal polyp sir remove everything nasal polyp sir in entire microbiology that is an in infectious disease nasal polyp nasal polyp you see in only one disease rhinosporidiosis rhino sporidiosis which is caused by rhinosporidium seberi which is caused by rhinosporidium seberi seberi sir we call this organism as miso right we call them as miso mycetozoa miso mycetozoa sir what do you mean by it belongs to miso mycetozoa what do you mean by miso miso means middle miso means middle myce means fungus fungus zoa means protozoa protozoa sir rhinosporidium seberi it is not complete like it is not completely a fungus a fungus and not completely a protozoa it is somewhere in between it is somewhere in between in between fungus and protozoa that's why we call it as mycetozoa miso mycetozoa right it is not completely fungus it is not a completely protozoa it looks like fungus and also protozoa we call it as miso mycetozoa fungus like protozoa miso in between fungus or protozoa see pneumocystis gerasi we consider it as fungus pneumocystis gerasi we consider it as fungus though it looks like protozoa we consider it as fungus it is not miso mycetozoa it is a fungus that looks like protozoa pneumocystis but rhinosporidium seberi is a miso mycetozoa that looks like mycetozoa in between fungus and protozoa and if you see this if you see this what you see here is round cells with endospores inside round cells with endospores inside this is a picture of rhinosporidium seberi sir round cells with endospores inside this complete picture is known as spherule this complete picture is known as spherule and remember spherule is seen in coccidiodes <coughs> spherule is seen in coccidiodes if you remember we have discussed spherule is seen in coccidiodes but the manifestation of coccidiodes is pneumonia pneumonia not polyp nasal polyp sir clinical history nasal polyp says it is rhinosporidiosis that's why the answer is rhinosporidiosis and the image in image what shows here is image what you see here is spherule a round cell with endospores inside 
सर इमेज लाइक सूडो हाईफे मैन वेर इज वेर आर सूडो हाईफे आई आई एम नॉट सींग एनी सूडो हाईफे आई एम नॉट सींग एनी सूडो हाईफे ओके प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन ओके दिस वन या दैट लुक लाइक सूडो हाईफे इवन इफ यू कंसिडर इट एज सूडो हाईफे मैन कोविड रिकवर्ड पेशेंट ऑन स्टीरोइड नेजल डिस्चार्ज इन कैनेडा वेर डू सी नेजल डिस्चार्ज इन कैनेडा यू वोट सी नेजल डिस्चार्ज कैनेडा अफेक्ट म्यूको क्यूटेनियस साइड You get oral candidiasis, esophageal candidiasis, vaginal candidiasis, cutaneous candidiasis, right? Clinical history is a nasal discharge. You won't see nasal discharge, nasal discharge, right? In candidiasis, clinical history, nasal discharge. Then predisposing factors: COVID patient, recovered COVID patient on steroids. These are not for candida, sir. These predisposing factors and steroids. These two predisposing factors favors mucor mycosis. needles nasal discharge favors mucor mycosis and image is more towards mucor mycosis though i i agree that it may look like pseudo hyphae also i agree agree but image also looks like towards mucor mycosis there is nothing in favor of candida in the question there is nothing in favor of candida in question okay spherules are seen in rhinosporidiosis and coccidiodis and there is nothing in favor of coccidiosis in the question there is one thing which is in favor of rhinosporidiosis nasal polyp that is that is the only manifestation of rhinosporidiosis coccidiosis ka manifestation is pneumonia and that there you can also see spherules spherules are seen in two places differential diagnosis sir but the image look like dichotomous branching even if the image look like dichotomous branching once again recovered from covid 19 on steroids on steroids nasal discharge more towards mucor mycosis right might be there were something else in the question if you have to go for aspergillus there should be something favoring aspergillus with this clinical history i am not finding it anything favoring aspergillus though aspergillosis you can see in covid recovered patient no doubt in that you can see we on steroids but i am not seeing anything in favor of aspergillosis even if you see aspergillosis in covid recovered patients on steroids most common is mucor mycosis i want to go for mucor mycosis even if you can see aspergillosis because mu most common is mucor mycosis and everything is favoring towards mucor mycosis nothing is favoring towards asper there should be something favoring towards aspergillosis second if you see the hyphae hyphae are broad broad hyphae are always aseptic we call them as ribbon like hyphae they are septate hyphae are narrow septate hyphae are narrow there is nothing meant to tell it is matlab obviously there is a image but image based question on dichotomous branching acute angle and aseptic branching no obtuse angle it is always very difficult very difficult it is always confusing you there should be something in the clinical history favoring here the complete clinical history is in towards towards in favor of mucor mycosis and you got the answer here question number 16 option c move to the next question question number 17 sir advantages of saline wet mount over iodine wet mount sir they are asking about the stool wet mount stool wet mount what we do for parasites stool wet mount what we do for parasites sir for parasites we take do stool wet mount one drop of stool sample one drop of saline that is saline wet mount saline wet mount sir one drop of sample one drop of iodine sir iodine wet mount saline wet mount iodine wet mount sir why do we add iodine sir iodine stains the cyst iodine stains the cyst stains the cyst stains the cyst and also iodine stains the egg iodine right stains the cyst and stains the egg stains means it makes them brown yellowish brown because you know iodine is yellowish brown when the cyst and eggs become yellowish brown you can see them better you can see them better but iodine can't stain the trophozoites trophozoites are not stained trophozoites are not stained trophozoites are not stained Right. So trophozoites are seen better in saline wet mount. Trophozoites are seen better in saline wet mount. Cysts and eggs are seen better in iodine wet mount. Second thing, so trophozoites motility is seen better in saline wet mount. The trophozoite motility can't be seen better in iodine wet mount because iodine wet mount gets dried very soon and motility stops very soon. Iodine wet mount get gets dry very soon and motility stops very soon. to see the motility of the trophozoites it should not dry very soon that's why saline wet mount it will not dry very soon you can see the motility for a longer time so trophozoite motility you see better in saline wet mount second thing in saline wet mount bile stained eggs the eggs which are bile stained 
which are already stained with the bile see eggs come in the come in the stool sample and stool sample contains bile and this bile stains the parasitic eggs and bile stained eggs whatever you see in the stool sample they look right bile stained eggs they look brown color they look brown color and non bile stained eggs non bile stained eggs they are colorless they are colorless because they are not stained with the bile in iodine in saline wet mold we are not adding any iodine just it is saline sir bile stained eggs they are already stained with the bile in the stool itself stool sample itself because stool sample contains bile and they look brown because they are stained with the bile and non bile stained eggs they look colorless because they are not stained with the bile whereas in iodine wet mold all eggs they look brown whether they are bile stained or non bile stained because iodine makes the non bile stained eggs brown iodine makes the non bile stained eggs brown and that's why the advantages of saline wet mount is trophozoite motility you can see for longer time and trophozoites motility you can demonstrate better because iodine wet mount gets dry very soon motility stops very soon and bile stained and non bile stained eggs you can differentiate by saline wet mount because in saline wet mount only bile stained eggs are brown non bile stained eggs are colorless whereas in iodine wet mount all eggs they become brown because of iodine <coughs> And cis are seen better, <coughs> X are seen better, but you can't differentiate bile stained or non bile stained. And you can't, and trophozoite motility can demonstrate immediately. In iodine wet mount also, you can demonstrate the trophozoite motility immediately, but not after some time. Whereas in saline wet mount, we can demonstrate even after some time. Therefore, the two advantages of saline wet mount is you can demonstrate the trophozoite motility better than iodine wet mount. And bile stained, non bile stained, you can differentiate. And that's why the answer is option C, that is both A and C. Both A and C means Sir, here are advantages of saline wet mount over iodine wet mount. Demonstration of motility of the trophozoite, yes. Identity, identify the internal structures better, no. Right. So, identification of internal structures better is done by iodine wet mount. Internal structures are seen better in iodine wet mount. That's why you can demonstrate or identify the cis and egg better. Internal structures are seen better in iodine wet mount. In saline wet mount, because it is colorless, you can't see the internal structures better. And yes, sir, differentiate bile stained and non bile stained X. That's why the answer is A and C. Internal structures are seen better with the iodine wet mount. This is about the wet mount. Saline wet mount, iodine wet mount, differentiating point in stool wet mount. That's why the answer is option C. 17th question. Moving on to the next question, 18th question. Which of the following organisms can show movement intracellular, uh, transcellularly by using actin based mechanism? Sir, which of the following organisms show, shows? Or show movement transcellularly by using actin based mechanism. Sir, this is the cell, this is the cell, this is the cell, this is the cell. You are telling which is the organism which can move from one cell to one cell, one cell to one cell by using actin, which can spread from one cell to one cell, which can spread from one cell to another cell by using actin, by using actin filaments. That is what they are asking. Right? For that, you need to know all the organisms which are transmitted, right? We show movement by using actin by using actin spread 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 from cell to cell by using actin spread from cell to cell you see with four important organisms one gram positive that is listeria and three gram negative that is rbs rbs means rickettsia burkholderia and shigella rickettsia burkholderia and shigella sir one gram positive organism which can spread cell to cell by using actin filament listeria and 3 gram negative sir, rickets here, Burkholderi and Shigella RBS, they spread cell to cell. And if you, are, if you see among these four, sir, one we have Listeria. It can spread cell to cell by using actin based mechanism. That's why the answer is a Listeria, direct question. Man. Whether we know all the organisms which can spread cell to cell by using actin filament. Moving on to the next question. Sir, which of the following drugs would be most useful in the management of diarrhea in a patient who was on ampicillin therapy for past one week and is now discontinued? So which of the following drugs would be the most useful in the management of diarrhea in a patient who was on ampicillin therapy? Sir, diarrhea in a patient who was on sir, antibiotic associated diarrhea. So the question is based on the diagnosis is antibiotic associated diarrhea. The diagnosis is sir, antibiotic associated diarrhea. Right, antibiotic associated diarrhea which is caused by Clostridium difficile. <coughs> And the new drug of choice, new drug of choice is Fidoxomycin. Earlier it was 
vancomycin with metronidazole sir earlier we used to treat clostridium difficile with vancomycin and metronidazole right earlier or you can say old drug of choice okay the old drug of choice or treatment of choice vancomycin plus metronidazole the new treatment of choice is fidoxomycin that's why the answer is a fidoxomycin direct question sir question number 19 sir moving on to the next question question number 20 vibrio cholerae causes cholera by disrupting the tight junction which contains sir remember vibrio cholera vibrio cholera is a bacteria right is a bacteria that right binds to zona occludens zona occludens of tight junction right binds to zona occludens and disrupts the binds to zona occludens or you can say disrupts the zona occludens it can bind and disrupts the zona occludens and then produces a toxin cholera toxin cholera toxin and this cholera toxin binds to right this cholera toxin binds to gm1 gangliosyde receptors gm1 gm1 gangliosyde receptors and finally finally it act by increasing cyclic amt sorry increasing cyclic amt to cause a disease cholera cholera sir which manifest with rice watery diarrhea which manifest with rice watery diarrhea the zona occludens is what is disrupted cholera toxin is produced that bind to sir everything is important everything is important right zona occludens disruption gm1 gangliosyde receptor action is increasing cyclic and the manifestation is rice watery diarrhea so that's why the answer is a zona occludens right tight junction disrupting the zona occludens so straight forward question it disrupts the zona occludens so move to the next question so this was everybody is saying sir this was the most difficult question what we got from microbiology i don't know what is matlab why you felt this is most difficult i never understand if you attended my class it is easy to approach this question a male patient with liver cirrhosis was positive for the following serological markers hbsag non reactive i told you when hbsag non non reactive i told there is no infection right i told there is no infection no infection sir infection 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 you can rule out all this you can rule out all this now with this you can say probably vaccination probably vaccination but in case of vaccination further if you see hbag is also non reactive anti hbs is non reactive igm 90 hbc is not total anti hbc is reactive total anti hbc is reactive because total anti hbc is reactive vaccination is ruled out <coughs> because in vaccination you get only anti hbs reactive yeah that all here all matlab anti hbs non reactive here also you can say vaccination is ruled out right sir your lectures made it easy thank you guys thank you sir it can't be vaccination because in vaccination anti hbs is the one which is reactive hbs ag is not there so infection is also not there then no option is right that is not possible that is not possible right if you see the question one thing what i want to highlight here is you know i have given you the flow chart hbs ag is negative anti hbs is also negative that is the definition of right that is the definition of window period that is the definition of window period that is the definition of window period right that is the definition of window period that means you are going in favor of window period but they say acute infection with in, even window period in acute infection igm should be there but they say igm anti hbc is non reactive that's why this is ruled out why window period is ruled out is because they say acute infection in window period acute infection means you have to see igm anti hbc and you know that even window period you see anti hbc and anti hbe right hbs ag is not there anti hbs is not there but what is there remaining two antibodies should be there therefore ultimately the answer is chronic infection with inactive carrier sir why the answer is chronic infection with inactive carrier that i will tell you here that i will tell you here first of all first of all right sir chronic infection chronic infection and carrier state 
chronic infection and carrier state right carrier state chronic infection sir hbs ag hbh ag persists for more than 6 months here also carrier state hbs ag persists for more than okay we'll take it here it is better to discuss here sir one side i want to discuss chronic infection one side i want to discuss carrier state carrier state chronic infection organism will be there hepatitis b virus will be there because hepatitis b virus will be there hbs ag positive hbv dna positive hbv dna positive and alt will be alt will be more that is liver enzymes in carrier state hepatitis b virus will be there hepatitis b virus will be there but it is in very low number that's why hbs ag usually positive but sometimes it may be negative sometimes it may be negative hbv dna hbv dna sir it is always negative right it is there but very low in number very low in number that's why not detectable sir alt is normal i'm just telling you how to differentiate chronic infection with carrier state how to differentiate chronic infection with carrier state sir in chronic infection hbs ag will be there right hbv dna will be there and alt will be increased because there is infection in carrier state hbs ag usually it will be detectable but sometimes it may not detectable it may not detectable because organism is very low in number and hbv dna is not at all detectable because organisms are very low in number and alt is normal this is how you differentiate chronic infection with carrier state in this question hbs ag is not there when hbs ag is not there we have to go for the carrier state and that's why the answer is option b carrier state carrier state infection may hbs ag should be there but infection with window period hbs ag won't be there infection with window period hbs ag won't be there but but in window period other antibodies should be there right in window period anti hbc positive and anti hb e positive anti hb positive these two antibodies should be positive in window period that is not given here remote infection with complete recovery sir complete recovery all the three antibodies should be positive all the three antibodies should be positive sir recovery sir vaccination only anti hbs should be positive sir all other options are not possible here right hbs ag is not there right that is possible in carrier state hbs ag is not there that is possible in carrier state and remain in things whether hbv dna and alt whether they mentioned in the question or not i didn't get the right response regarding that from the students Right, I didn't get the response regarding HBV, DNA, and ALT. Whether they have made, they had mentioned or not, with the available history, what we have got, right? It is acute infection with window period is not possible because acute infection may have to get IgM anti HBC. There is no IgM anti HBC, and window period may have to get other antibodies, right? So I, acute infection, remote infection with complete recovery, not possible. All the three antibodies should be there here. They say IgM anti HBC is not there. Vaccination is not possible. Anti HBC is not there. so that's why all other things are not possible one thing which can be possible is chronic infection which has become inactive carrier when patients become inactive carrier organism will go down and organism will go down hbs ag will be negative hb dna will be negative alt will be normal okay now c better nahi hoga yaar c better nahi hoga na all the three antibody should be positive see why c better nahi hoga na complete recovery All the three antibodies should be positive in recovery. Anti HBS negative है तो recovery ruled out guys. देखो anti HBS non-reactive recovery is ruled out. Recovery is ruled out. Yeah, see AK the AK AK mentioned here. I marked chronic carrier state only based on exclusion, but didn't understand how at that time. That's what I'm telling. even if you have not understood but other things can easily ruled out see acute infection can be ruled out because 
IgM anti HBS is negative. Recovery is ruled out because IgM and sir, one thing, le lo yaar. One thing, you forget everything. You forget everything. One thing, one thing, le lo yaar. Anti HBS non-reactive. Take this one thing. Anti HBS non-reactive. And also you take IgM anti HBC non-reactive. So, dono antibodies non-reactive hai. Anti HBS and anti HBC. Right. IgM anti HBC non-reactive acute infection is ruled out. Anti HBS and IgM anti HBC non-reactive sir complete recovery is ruled out. Anti HBS is not complete recovery is ruled out. Vaccination anti HBS negative vaccination is ruled out. Everything is ruled out. It is the carrier state. And why it is the carrier state? I have given you the explanation. In carrier state organism load will come down. HBS AG may not be detectable sometimes. There is no other possibility. It's a very easy question. Right? If you rule out, it is very easy. Okay, any doubts? Because so many students are confused with this question. I don't know why. Clear cut dancer. No doubt in the clear cut dancer is chronic infection with inactive carrier. Recombinant vaccine was given. Recombinant was vaccine. Recombinant vaccine was given for other question. Hem and human papilloma virus L1 antigen. For that question, they mentioned recombinant vaccine, not for this question. Sir, with your flow chart only, I got the answer. Thank you. Sir, only marked chronic carrier by exclusion, right? Sir, recovered all antibodies should be positive, right? Recovered all the antibodies should be positive. Right. See, if you feel right, any other option, give me the reason. I can give you, sir. Once again, I'm taking a little bit of time of, of your time here. Acute infection, why it is not acute infection? I will tell you, once they say IgM anti HBC non-reactive, sir, I will rule out acute infection. I will rule out acute infection, not possible. Then re recovery, recovery, all the three antibodies should be positive. Vaccination, anti HBS should be positive. How can you say any other options as true statement when these things are given here? Not possible. Chronic infection with inactive carrier, you can say, you can say, though it nothing clear in this question, but you can say, you can say chronic infection with inactive carrier. Because other three options are not possible. Other three options are not possible as an answer. Remote infection with recovered IgG anti HBC positive. Yeah, very good. Remote infection, I agree. Recovered IgG anti HBC will be positive. Right answer. IgG anti HBC will be positive. But why anti HBS is non reactive? Anti HBS should also be positive. Anti HBS should also be positive. Remote infection with recovery. Anti HBS should also be positive. Right. In recovery, anti HBS can't be negative. Anti HBS can't be negative. What you said is right. Remote infection with recovery, IgG, anti HBC is positive. I agree. Total anti HBC is positive. IgM is negative means they are telling IgG, anti HBC is positive. But what about anti HBS? Why anti HBC is non reactive in recovery? It should be reactive. What is total anti HBC? Total anti HBC is IgM plus IgG. Total anti HBC is IgM plus IgG. When they say total anti HBC is positive, together IgM and IgG is positive. But they say IgM anti HBC is negative. Means, see, that I will tell you here total anti HBC means IgM plus IgG of anti HBC is positive, means reactive react whereas IgM anti HBC IgM anti HBC is negative total is positive right and IgM is negative ultimately what they are trying to tell right ultimate conclusion is what they are telling to tell is IgG anti HBC positive <coughs> that is the conclusion any doubts if you have any doubts you can ask Sir, recombinant was given in the question. Even if recombinant was given in the question, what di difference it is going to make, I did not understand. What difference it is going to make, you have to tell me. So this is what it means. Total anti HBC positive, IgM anti HBC negative means they are telling IgG anti HBC positive. 
antibodies may be absent in remote infection antibodies may be absent in the remote infection why antibodies are absent in remote infection i don't know so with this history with this matlab serology i go with chronic infection with inactive carrier state because it is more in favor of carrier state when hbsag is negative when hbsag is negative so that's why i'm going with the carrier state and even they say <coughs> igg anti hbc igg anti hbc positive that is also in favor of chronic infection igg anti hbc positive that is in favor of chronic infection and then then hbs ag non reactive that is in favor of carrier state that is in favor of carrier state and that's why the better answer is option b that is what i feel guys maybe if serology ka recollection was not proper if question was not proper answer will change and answer may change okay so move to the next question without wasting our time sir recombinant human papilloma virus vaccine contains which of the following antigen you know that l1 antigen is present in recombinant vaccine l1 antigen of human papilloma virus is present in recombinant vaccine and e6 e7 genes are proto onco genes proto onco genes of human papilloma virus so this is for vaccine these are proto onco genes which causes cervical cancer which causes cervical cancer so very important question that's why the answer is clear cut answer is a l1 antigen that is the antigen present in the recombinant vaccine of human papilloma virus whereas e6 e7 gene are proto oncogenes causing cervical cancer move to the next question question number 23 which of the following organism and its resistant drug matched correctly matched correctly so remember candida cruzi right fluconazole candida glabrata liposomal amphotericin b aspergillus niger voriconazole aspergillus rhodes mycophagin the answer is a right candida cruzi fluconazole why sir candida cruzi is intrinsically resistant intrinsically resistant resistant to fluconazole sir candida cruzi is a drug resistant candida the most drug resistant candida is candida oris after or is the second drug resistant candida is candida cruzi and candida cruzi is intrinsically resistant to fluconazole means by birth means congenitally it is resistant to fluconazole you can't use fluconazole for candida cruzi otherwise drug of choice for candida drug of choice for candida is fluconazole drug of choice for candida is fluconazole but not for candida cruzi sir candida cruzi drug of choice is caspofungin or mycophagin Echinocandin group of drugs are the drug of choice for Candida cruzi. It is not fluconazole because it is fluconazole resistant Candida Candida cruzi, and that's why the answer is A. Sir, Candida glabrata. What is the drug of choice? Sir, Candida glabrata. Drug of choice is okay. Candida glabrata again. Drug of choice is it is also resistant to usually resistant to fluconazole. Drug of choice is caspofungin, but liposomal amphotericin B can be used. Can be used. Can be used. Aspergillus niger drug of choice is voriconazole aspergillus fumigatus drug of choice is voriconazole but myca fungin can be used for aspergillus remember myca fungin can be used i'm not it can be used for aspergillus it can be used for aspergillus it doesn't mean that you have to use but can be used it is not resistant and liposomal amphotericin b can be used for candida can be used for candida <clears throat> and oriconazole sir oriconazole so it is a drug of choice for aspergillus it's a drug of choice for aspergillus niger and also fumigatus sir fumigatus also oriconazole is a drug of choice but mycophagin can be used for aspergillus both the aspergillus mycophagin can be used both the aspergillus drug of choice is oriconazole both the aspergillus mycophagin can be used mycophagin can be used sir candida drug of choice is fluconazole second drug of choice is Again, caspofungin or mycophagin, but lipoamphotericin B can be used. But Candida cruzi, you can't use fluconazole because it is intrinsically resistant. It is always resistant by birth. Congenitally, it is resistant. That's why answer is E. Other drugs can be used for other organisms. That's why the answer is E. Moving on to the last question, question number twenty-four. So totally, we got twenty-four questions from microbiology. Obviously, that's a very huge number out of two hundred questions. Only few questions are overlapped. Treatment and all that also comes in microbiology. That is the pharmacological part. right purely sir microbiology questions you got 24 questions without any overlapping simple sir what ultimately what is microbiology microbiology is lab diagnosis of infectious diseases 
one of the, the one or the other infectious disease from any of the clinical subject we have to diagnose because that is our work diagnosis of infectious diseases so all these questions are directly from microbiology and we got 24 questions in ana set out of 200 questions that's a very huge and great number so which of the following has least teratogenicity if you have attended my class i have told you people right high risk of high risk of congenital infection high risk of congenital infection it with cytomegalovirus and low risk of congenital infection <coughs> low risk of congenital infection is with herpes simplex virus too this is what we have discussed this is what they asked in the previous ins and this time they are not asking about the risk of congenital infection they are asking teratogenicity means right any malformations congenital malformations you see congenital malformations you see sir cytomegalovirus sir cytomegalovirus means sir you can see microcephaly you can see microcephaly congenital malformation obviously you see periventricular calcifications periventricular calcifications in the brain but you also see small head microcephaly congenital malformation chicken pox sir varicella zoster virus sir you see limb hypoplasia short limbs and psychiatrization short limbs you can see as congenital malformation sir rubella pda patent ductus arteriosus you can see as right patent ductus arteriosus you can see a congenital malformation so there is no congenital malformation there is no teratogenicity there is no malformation in case of neonatal herpes neonatal herpes so among the options like there is no teratogenicity for herpes simplex virus and it is having least risk of transmission from mother to baby therefore it is having least chance of causing infection to the baby or least chance of causing congenital infection so overall hsv2 is having least chance so first trimester first trimester if they ask first trimester more chances for rubella first trimester more chances for rubella nothing is mentioned overall congenital infection high risk is cytomegalovirus so rubella rubella sir they can they have to mention rubella high risk in first trimester high risk in first trimester if they mention like this then the answer will become rubella then the answer will become clear sir if they tell high risk causing congenital infection not mentioning any trimester cytomegalovirus or after first trimester cytomegalovirus high risk of congenital infection in first trimester rubella low risk is for his rp simplex virus too and teratogenicity that is congenital malformations you see with all except with rp simplex virus too that's why the answer is rp simplex virus too mother with history of painful genital ulcer and neonate with poor feeding vomiting seizure and vesicles on anterior abdominal wall of the forearm thank you guys thanks for that question and uh, sir this is all about the questions the recall questions what students have provided based on that we have given the answers and remember answers may vary answers may vary based on right the questions what we have recollected and options what we have recollected if options have not recollected properly questions is, uh, were not recollected properly even if one word is missed or changed in the question if the sentence also changed in the question is one options one one of the options also changed sir answer changes this is just based on what we have got just to discuss so that we come to know how we have performed in the exam with that hope you have performed well right hope you you come up with uh, flying colors hope your results will be good and what are maybe the results right you have to continue your preparation so continue with your preparation don't worry about what may be the result or what might be the result sir continue with your preparation put your hard efforts and do it with a proper plan you know that is the smart work sir success is yours well thank you guys all the best read well bye bye see you thank you if there is anything to ask you can ask otherwise we are done with our class hope you got the clear picture from micro clear picture of microbiology questions in ins set <clears throat>